So after explaining all the incarnations, this 28 verse says Krishna is the source of all incarnations. That is called as emperor verse, and we just touched upon that verse. We will continue today. Will be emperor verse part two. We'll discuss the same verse, and uh, we will spend a little more time on this verse, and then uh, we'll continue with the other uh, part of the chapter. So we'll repeat this chant this verse again. All of you have access to this verse. Shrimad Bhagavatam. So you can get the first canto from next time onwards. It will be easy. One point three point twenty eight. So you can please repeat after me. And after we chant the verse, one of you can read the translation. Ete cham sa kalapum sa Krishna stu Bhagavan swayam. Indrari vakulam lokam, Mridayanti yuge yuge. All the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portion or the portion of plenary portions of the Lord. But Lord Sri Krishna is the original personality of the God. All of them appear on planets whenever they is a disturbance created by the atheists. The Lord incarnates to protect the kings. So this is a very important verse because before this shloka, all different incarnations are mentioned. Matsya, Purma, Varaha, Narasimha, uh, even Mohini Murti, everybody is mentioned, Parashuram. And then this verse comes where it is said, okay, we've told so many incarnations. Ete, Chamsa, Kalaha, Pumsa. They are either expansions or plenary expansions. But please know Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam. But Krishna is the Supreme God. So basically, the point explained in this verse is that Krishna is not an expansion of Vishnu, but is a source of Vishnu. At the same time, he also comes from Vishnu. We explained an example how if there is a big industrialist, if like if if Mukesh Ambani goes to one of uh, the small offices of his organization, and if he enters that office premises and meets the meets the head of that branch there, and he's talking to him, and that head. Of that particular branch takes Mukesh Ambani around and shows him around. Then that the gatekeeper or the security guard in that particular branch may not know who Mukesh Ambani is. He thinks my boss is the supreme boss, and here is some guest who has come to my boss's office, and he is showing him around. But actually, he doesn't know that the guest who has come is the boss of his boss. Similarly, Krishna is a supreme lord, but he comes to the material world through Vishnu. It comes as an expansion incarnation of Shiro Daksha Vishnu. So, like that, we have to understand that um, uh, Krishna is not one of the incarnations. Diva Goswami has written a commentary called Krishna Sandarbha, one of his six commentaries, and in that he says that this is the emperor verse. Like uh, in the Sanskrit, it is called as Paribhasha Sutra. Paribhasha Sutra means the main shloka of the book. And this verse comes only once in a uh, book. The Paribhasha Sutra comes once in a book. But generally, it comes in the beginning of the book. And this Paribhasha Sutra comes once in the book, generally in the beginning of the book, and it gives a key for understanding the entire work. So you want to know the entire what the entire Bhagavatam is 18th moment shlokas are. This one shloka will give us the guidance. It will give us the guideline. And this one shloka will basically govern the entire body of literature of Bhagavatam. That's how powerful this shloka is. That's why we spent a lot of time last time also on this. And see, the literature may contain millions of statements. But all the statements in this book, they have to be aligned with this statement. That's why I told last time, two weeks ago, three weeks ago actually, that please memorize this verse and come because this is the emperor verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I don't know how many of you memorized it. You memorized it? Would you like to lead all of us to chant? You chant the first line, we will respond and then again all of you chant, okay? You can chant the first line. Ete chamsa kalapumsa Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam. Indrari Lokam. Vyakulam. Vyakulam Lokam. Indrari Vyakulam Lokam. 
Vridaya and P U G U G. Hari Bo. Thank you. Thank you for memorizing. Anybody else memorized this in the last two weeks? Ete Chamsa Kalapunsa. Ete Chamsa Kalapunsa. Krishna so Bhagavan Swayam. Indra Mare Vyakula Lokam. Vridayanti Yuge Yuge. Thank you very much for memorizing this verse. This is very, very important. So now you are giving me faith to have these offline classes. <laughs> okay. So this is the most important statement of the Srimad Bhagavad. Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam. And all the verses, all the statements are aligned to this one verse. See, just like an organization has a vision statement. You, know, you go to any organization, they put it up on the board. Mission statement of our organization. Similarly, a book, a Vedic scripture, a literature has a Paribhasha Sutra, which is called as a vision statement. And this verse is chosen as the Paribhasha Sutra, the vision statement of Bhagavatam, because this verse is very clear, very definitive, and it defeats all other verses by establishing the identity of the Bhagavan, identity of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, it is most unambiguous, declarative, conclusive statement and absolute statement about uh, establishing the supremacy of Lord Krishna, which is very emphatically mentioned in this verse. That's why this verse is most important for the students of Srimad Bhagavatam. Also, if you see in the Srimad Bhagavatam, many forms of Krishna are mentioned, like Matsyavara. In fact, in this chapter only, the verses before this we discussed. But if you see here, there is an emphatic punch. Therefore, out of the 18th of verses, this is called as the emperor. Like, you know, in an army, um, you know, all the verses are compared to the army, the different soldiers. But there is one commander, the supreme commander of the forces. That is the emperor, that is the boss, chief. So, Jiva Goswami, what he has done, he has given us 12 characteristics of this verse, which he says makes it as the emperor verse. And um, these 12 characteristics makes it the Paribhasha Sutra. And the first, what we discussed last time was consistency. Like if you are submitting a paper for a conference or a journal, you know, or you're new, when you, like when you're giving your paper for Indian Economic Journal or Indian Science Journal, first you give an abstract and then the essay and the conclusion is there. So, and it has to be consistent. Your main theme has to be consistent in the entire essay. Similarly, if you see, this is the first verse, the first verse of the chapter, if you see, and now the 28th verse, which is the last in this section, both mention that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. And if you see the Srimad Bhagavatam, the first verse and the last verse of the Bhagavatam also mentions this. Bhagavatam begins with Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. And the last verse of the Bhagavatam ends with Sri Krishna, Krishna, Saka, Vrishni, Rishabhavani, Durga. Krishna is the Supreme Lord, he is the friend of Arjuna and he is the Supreme Controller. So similarly, if the opening and conclusion is same, then it is a bona fide presentation. There is consistency. Like in Bhagavad Gita also, Krishna begins by telling Arjuna, don't lament. And the Bhagavad Gita ends, begins by Krishna telling Arjuna, don't lament. And it ends by Arjuna saying, I, I, all my lamentation has gone. <laughs> so there is some consistency there. That is a very scientific, poetic way of presenting. Like in movies, you know, there is a, there is a suspense thriller. Some first scene may be there something and the last scene will be connected to that. <laughs> so then it appears to be a very intelligently made movie. So similarly, poetic uh, scriptural works are like that. So here, if you see Krishna, is big, it has begun with Krishna as the Supreme Lord. It has ended with that. So therefore, it is consistent. So that is how Jiva Goswami says that uh, this verse is the emperor verse because it is consistent with the Bhagavatam's conclusion. Second uh, feature he's saying is reconciliation. Like this is also important because reconciling, because in the beginning, if you see in this chapter, Krishna is mentioned as one of the incarnations. <laughs> Now, in the end, it is said, in the end of the section, Krishna is the source of all incarnations. Now, you may say, but this is not consistency. Because some time back, you are saying he is one of the incarnations. So, <clears throat> what we have to understand, it, this verse is Paribhasha Sutra, because this verse re-coincides. Like, whatever different things are there, it is all re-coincided when you take this verse as the main verse. Like, for example, you know, sometimes some special guests come to our temple, Sri Prabhupada's disciples, and I was serving them. So when there is one uh, guest, if I serve him prasadam in the afternoon and I ask him, what will you take for dinner? He says, I will take light dinner. Just get me khichdi. 
So then I go. But then after two hours, he calls me and says, no, 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 I will not take dinner. You just get me milk at seven o'clock. So at seven o'clock, when I go to him, what should I take? Should I take dinner, khichdi, or should I take milk? Milk, because what he said last or later is the instruction that I follow. So in the beginning of this section, if Krishna is mentioned on other incarnations, make some point to explain how he comes through. Like I give the example of Ambani. Similarly, Krishna is mentioned as one of the incarnations. He comes through Kshira Daksha Vishnu. But in the end, he clarifies. So Tagusam is clarifying. Please know, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is Bhagavan Swayam. Understand that. So the later statement has to be given more weightage than the earlier statement. So this is the second. First is consistency. consistency. Second is reconcile. And third is distinction. Distinction means you know, like this word, this verse has to be given so much importance. Because here the word, if you see the first line of this verse is, Ete chamsa, kala, pumsa, all the incarnations are expansions or plenty expansions, but Krishna's tu, Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna, the, the word tu is very important. What is the meaning of this word tu? The Sanskrit, the Sanskrit meaning, not the Hindi meaning. <laughs> Hindi meaning of tu is <laughs> you. We are not talking of the Hindi meaning, we are talking of the Sanskrit meaning of the word tu. So tu means, you know, when, when the word tu comes, it separates everything that was said before with this state, with this word. Like tu means but. All the incarnations are, are there, but this divides everything before and establishes Krishna as the Supreme Lord. So the word tu is indicated, uh, is used to indicate that the subject matter that is following now is different from the previous subject matter. So all the incarnations are plenary expansions and all that, but Krishna's to Bhagavan's name. But Krishna is the Supreme Lord. That means Krishna is distinguished from the Amsha, from the Kala, from the expansion. Therefore, this is very scientific verse. He is different. So the special mention of Krishna is made by using the word tu. Like, you know, you cook a big feast for the devotees. You know, great uh, paneer, what is that? Uh, uh, pineapple butter halwa, butter halwa, then that uh, paneer sabzi with the, you know, the Purushottam Ru makes smoky flavor. He takes coal and <laughs> puts ghee on it and then so all that you make and then the salad is very nice and we appreciate everything and he listens to us very attentively. So the salad was very good, uh, paneer sabzi was very good, this was good, but <laughs> when you say the word but, he knows that all that I've said previously is cancelled. <laughs> now what I'm going to say he is going to pay a lot of attention. All that appreciation of the past is gone. <laughs> but, uh, but kya, Prabhu ji, wo dal toda namak jada ho. Baki sab bhul jayega ho. So, similarly, the most important thing is going to be said now after using the word tu. Krishna's tu, Bhagavan sab. Thik hai? We gave a long list of incarnations, 40 lists, 40 num things have been mentioned, 40 incarnations, it's all okay. But now is important. So what follows has to be taken more seriously. Prabhu, you are a very nice devotee. Prabhu, you are very good. You do nice kirtan. All of that is there. But your behavior is not good. <laughs> then that means all the previous is gone and he has to work on his behavior. So like that, therefore Krishna has to be given more weightage than the Amsha, than the Kala. So this is the way this is mentioned. So sometimes you know it, it's possible that in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there could be some statements that could come in Srimad Bhagavatam in future, where Krishna may be mentioned as one of the incarnations. Like some pastimes, some things may be mentioned like that. But uh, so this is the fourth, uh, I'm coming to the fourth, uh, for the first one, uh, consistency. Second is reconciliation. Third is distinction. Fourth is very important. This verse is Paribhasha Sutra because this establishes a philosophical statement. Now, very, very important, please understand. The fourth feature of a Paribhasha Sutra is Paribhasha Sutra is a verse or the, it's emperor verse because the philosophical statement is given more importance than historical statement. Like a philosophical truth that is established in this. See, this verse is not giving a historical statement. This verse is giving a philosophical statement. And philosophical statement has to be given more importance than historical some event. Like what it means is, for example, in the Bhagavatam later, you will find Krishna will be mentioned as one of the incarnations in some places. It is possible because it's a historical event, you know, so some, some incarnation Krishna has come like this or like that. 
But here, that is not mentioned. Here, the philosophical truth is being established. That whatever incarnations may come, go. But the statement, you have to understand all of this, incarnations are coming from ultimately Krishna. This is a philosophical statement. This is not a circumstantial statement. Like Buddha, for example. Last time we discussed in detail about Buddha also as one of the incarnations. So sometimes Krishna may be mentioned as an expansion of Vishnu. Hmm? Or some other detail must be there. May be given, but this verse gives an importance, uh, the the philosophical importance. So this is not contradictory because we take this as a philosophical truth, and philosophical truth is more important than some circumstantial statements. So therefore, this is the paribhasha. And the fifth feature of this verse is the now here very interesting the apparent contradictions to this shloka, the paribhasha sutra, they get corrected, and they are properly interpreted. Interpreted, and the right explanations are given, so that all the other explanations can be aligned to this Paribhasha Sutra. Means what I am trying to say is sometimes you know whenever you hear something contradictory, so whenever you are hearing anything contradictory, we have to interpret it in such a way that it will align to this verse. Like for example, you know very interesting. For example, in the tenth canto, you will find a very fascinating pastime of Krishna. Krishna and Arjuna, they will go to meet Mahavishnu, and Mahavishnu is, you know, they are like paying obeisances to Mahavishnu, and Mahavishnu is welcoming Krishna and Arjuna in his abode. So when we read this, we may get confused. Oh, Krishna and Arjuna are respecting Mahavishnu. So like that, you know, some confusion may arise. So at that time, what we have to do? Apparent contradictions. This is a feature. Apparent contradictions to Paribhasha Sutra are corrected. And they are properly interpreted, and the right explanations are given so that they can be aligned to this verse. So at that time, we have to say, okay, this is simply a historical pastime of the Lord, but we have to understand the truth on the basis of this verse. That is the meaning of a paribhasha sutra. See, it's a simple example. Sometimes when you are serving a big person, when you are serving a guru, what the guru does. He gives detailed instructions, and he also gives, uh, you know, how you should manage. And basically, he gives principles. Like in our community, Zolina Radha Nath Maharaj gave us principles. There should be no politics. He said you can tolerate somebody is not pure. You can tolerate somebody struggling with his senses. You can help them. You can give them encouragement, but politics should not be tolerated. <laughs> This is the instruction, and we should have a mood of service attitude. All that. Now, um, all that is documented. Like he gave a Brahmachari class, ten instructions for Brahmacharis. He gave ten instructions to us. He so we documented it. We should study scripture. We should have this attitude. All that is documented. It is printed. It is put. Now later some issues come up. You know, like thirty. This is thirty-five years ago, and now some issues come up. So he may say something briefly, or he may say, "Okay, do this." Whatever he says now is a supplement to what that which has already been told. You understand? So sometimes, so similarly, right in the beginning of Shrimad Bhagavatam, like like our Maharaj has told us everything when the community started. <coughs> similarly, in the Bhagavatam, right in the beginning, all the principles are clearly established. What is what? Hmm? After that, then some details are given here and there, some past time here, you know, like that. But the small details whatever they are given in the bhagavatam they are given based on what was said in the beginning it is not deviating from that like whatever maharaj instruction you can't tell maharaj maharaj but aapne to 35 years back you said like this no no that will be reconciled the same principle so you know sometimes maharaj nowadays doesn't give us details so what we do we fill in the blanks we understand that okay he had given us details in the beginning that common sense we use so the point i am trying to make is that the contradictions have to be resolved by taking the right reference from the right place so that's how this verse acts as a paribhasha sutra this verse acts as a right reference from the right place for all future thing that will come in shrimad bhagavatam so this is uh, very very important therefore all the verses of bhagavatam have to be connected and aligned to this so this is the fifth feature of paribhasha the sixth very important very very important Paribhasha Sutra. This verse is the emperor verse because this verse complements 
the mood of the all the <laughs> verses of the bhagavad see very very few verses contradict this verse most verses are complementing this so that is why this is very special like if you see you know randomly if you see bhagavatam you find so many beautiful shlokas which are echoing the same mood like brahma ji is considered to be the most intelligent personality he has four heads and he is the most you know is a secondary creator after the lord he is the one who is creating everything and the first prayer he offers to lord krishna in the 14th chapter of 10th canto is now mediate brava pushe tadidambaray गुंजावताम शिपिछल सन्मुखा वन्य स्रजे कवल वेत्र विषाण वेणु लक्ष्मश्रिए मृदुपदे पशुपांगजा ब्रह्म जी सिंह कृष्ण इज स्टैंडिंग अ स्मॉल बॉय स्टैंडिंग विथ कर्ड इन इज लेफ्ट हैंड बट अ कर्ड राइस एंड हेज इज फ्लूट एंड ही स्टैंडिंग विद फ्रेंड्स ब्रह्म जी सिंह दिस साइट एंड यूर अर्लियर गॉट बिविल्डेड and after krishna performed this past time he is saying now me dete brava pushe krishna you are so beautiful like a dark monsoon cloud tadid ambaraya but your dress is so lightning dazzling and you have a peacock feather on your head so he is describing krishna's details gunjavatam shappari pichala sanmukhaya there are there are lilies tucked on your ears and there are uh, beautiful flowers on your hair vanya sraje kavala vetra vishana ved you have a beautiful flute you have a garland of forest flowers krishna is not dressed like vishnu with costly ornaments and jewels he is having a garland that to not a very opulent garland flowers that are readily available in the forest and your body is having dust of the vrindavan on you know the dust is sprinkled on your uh, body hmm. So he is disc- he is recalling all this. Lakshma Shree Mudupade Pashupanga Jaya. You are actually the Lord of all the goddesses of fortune. <laughs> so uh, he is he is explaining Krishna's beauty, simple covered boy's beauty, but he is establishing him as the supreme lord. So what we are seeing here is a complementing of this verse, which we the emperor verse. It is not different. In fact, the next verse he establishes very clearly. पुषो मदनुग्रह स्वेच्छा मनसाण साक्षात किमुतात्मसुखाते ब्यूटिफुल वर्ड वेरी से मै डियर लॉर्ड द फैक्ट दट यू आर स्टैंडिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी इज युअर ब्लेसिंग अपॉन मी I mean, you don't have to stand in front of me like this. Mad anugrahasya, swecha mayasya natu bhuta mayasya kopi. You are coming from your own yoga maya potency. What capacity I have to understand you? Although I am the most intelligent man in this creation, I cannot understand you. Neshet abhisitam manasantare na. He says, with all my intellectual faculties, I cannot grasp you. साक्षात किमुतात्मसुखानुभूतेमुतात्मसुखानुभूतेमुतात्मसुखानुभूतेमुतात्मसुखानुभूतेमुतात्मसुखानुभूतेमुतात्मसुखानुभूतेमुतात्मसुख
in your house krishna came as a minister as an ordinary messenger <coughs> but he is not an ordinary messenger bhagavan akileshwara he is bhagavan he is a lord of everything but he came as a simple messenger and pauravendra gram hitva he gave up duryodhana's house was ready to offer him chappan bhog and prabivesh atmasatkutam and he entered pandava's house as if it is his own house <laughs> so now here you see this is another past and completely unrelated to the first canto third chapter 28th verse we are discussing or the 10th canto brahma's prayer this is a conversation going on and while conversing he says that krishna by the way is not a messenger he is bhagavan akileshwara so like that you will find many verses where um, you know is mentioned like guddava is recalling in the in third canto one place for krishna's glories so while recalling he suddenly starts crying oh krishna is so nice krishna is so nice so when when he saying krishna is so nice suddenly he says one verse um aho bakiyam stanakala kutam jigam samapaya yadapya sadavi lebe gatim datri uchitam tatonyam kamba dayalum sharanam brajema he says bakasur sister baki putana came she came putting poison in her breast to kill baby krishna and she is asadavi she is demoness but krishna sucked her poison as he was taking her milk and gave her the position of a nurse in the spiritual world nurse mother mother motherly nurse <laughs> <laughs> a mother or nurse you know it's technical lebe gatim da datri datri means nurse uchitam katonyam the verse says nurse actually when krishna was leaving this world no when that hunter shot an arrow jara to so krishna's feet and krishna actually just like if you are head you will say mummy you will say so krishna chanted his mother's name he said mata he called his mother so three mothers appeared devaki yashoda and putana <laughs> so this is krishna's mercy somebody who was who had come to kill him krishna gave her the position of uh, mother so he is recalling and in the next verse why i said this verse because the next verse uh, udava says uh, that this krishna is not ordinary later on in the battlefield of kurukshetra what happened you know why i am putting these verses is because this is not 10th canto nor is the first nor is this the first canto where okay you may say in the beginning it is mentioned or 10th canto it is mentioned but in between also you will find many verses like this so here he says what happened in the battlefield when arjuna was shooting arrows at the kauravas and they were dying on the battlefield something very mis- mystical happened so these soldiers kaurava soldiers were getting arrows on their body but as the arrows hit them they were seeing whom krishna and arjuna so what happened to them tateva channe naraloka veera yada have krishna mukhar vindam netre pibanto nayana bhiramam parta astraputa padama purasya so he is saying that all this different warriors in the battlefield tateva channe naraloka veera as they were dying yada have krishna mukhar vindam they saw krishna's beautiful lotus face because they were shot but when they were dying netre uh, pibanto from their eyes they were drinking nayana abhiramam that personality was the most beautiful personality but before drinking that beauty of krishna with their eyes partha astra puta puta means purified they were purified by the arrows of arjuna partha astra puta then what happened padam apurasya they went to the highest abode so if arjuna's arrows hit them they got purified of all their sins and they saw krishna's beauty and by seeing krishna's beauty they went to the highest abode that means this is the power of krishna if krishna can send, send them to the highest abode that means krishna is the supreme personality of god it so like that you will find repeatedly bhagavatam is uh, mentioning hmm? like there is one verse where it is uh, mentioned uh, i think this comes in the fourth canto very beautiful verse about arjuna uh, krishna um, what krishna did यदा च पार्थ प्रहिता सभायाम 
जगद गुरो यानी जगाद कृष्णा न तानि पुंसाम अमृता न यानी राजोर मेने शत पुण्य लेशा पेड़ इज मेंशन दैट अर्ज कृष्णा वॉज टोल्ड बाय अर्जुना यदा च पार्थ प्रहित सभायाम कृष्णा Please go to the assembly of Kauravas and give them a message for peace. And Krishna went, Jagat Guru, yani Jagad Krishna. He is Jagat Guru, but he went as a simple peon. But when he spoke in that assembly, Nata ni Pumsa Mamrata na yani. Some people found it nectar what Krishna was saying. Rajor mene shatapunya lesha. But many kings like Duryodhan and Karna. they did not consider it important they were bereft of pious deeds so like that you will see krishna is glorified consistently in the shrimad bhagavatam left right and center so most verses align with this paribhasha sutra and they directly agree with this verse that is why this verse is chosen as the emperor this is another proof of the veracity of this verse you know like this is this is the sixth quality is that okay the seventh is krishna is the principal subject matter of shrimad bhagavatam and that is established by this one shloka so there will be no confusion uh, like now i give a simple statistic krishna is the principal subject matter because if you see in shrimad bhagavatam throughout krishna's glories are mentioned now 10th canto and 11th canto these are like where it's only krishna directly so 10th and 11th canto uh if you see combine it is almost half of shrimad bhagavat it is so big so in 10th canto there are 90 chapters 90 and uh, 11th canto has around 31 chapters so 121 chapters total there are 335 chapters in shrimad bhagavat so it's quite a lot almost 40 40% 40 like that 45% is 10th and 11th so if you see 40 you know it's like democracy majority wins no <laughs> <laughs> so so many verses are glorifying so many chapters are directly about krishna so krishna has got maximum vote huh? so that is why this is established and also this is 10th and 11th canto but if you see there are many other cantos and many other chapters where krishna's glories are uh described and other incarnations they are not described so much like for example if you see uh lord ram How many verses are there in Ramayan? Fourteen thousand, no? Now in in Shrimad Bhagavatam, how many? Uh, only two chapters are there on Lord Ram. Only two chapters. Parashuram only one chapter. Narasimha Dev actually there are ten chapters in seventh canto, but technically it is ten. But mostly it is all glories of Pralad Maharaj. Actually only two chapters are there on Narasimha Dev. Fifth canto there is one chapter. Seventh canto actually eight, nine, ten, tenth only three chapters. The Matsya Avatar is one chapter, and uh, Purma Avatar is in uh, two chapters or three chapters like that. Samudra Mantan pastime there you will see little bit is mentioned about uh, Purma Avatar. Vaman Dev is four or five chapters that you know, like that, and Varad Dev is also three chapters in the third canto. Buddha is one or two shlokas. <laughs> Kalki is three shlokas, you know. So like that. This is uh, establishing how Krishna is the principal subject matter of Shrimad Bhagavat. That is the seventh quality. Eighth is very important, very interesting quality of this verse. Is if you see this verse establishes one point, and it is consistent with the point that Krishna is the common, not only most imp- important subject of Bhagavatam, but it, Krishna is a common interest of all the hearers and speakers of Shrimad Bhagavatam within the Shrimad Bhagavatam. The whoever is discussing what are subject matters in Shrimad Bhagavatam, their main desire is to know about Krishna. <laughs> like if you see Parikshit Maharaj, he is eager to hear about Krishna from Sukhdev Goswami. So many times he tells Sukhdev Goswami, "Please tell me about Krishna. Please tell me about Krishna." And Shonagar Rishi is talking to Sutta Goswami. He tells him again and again, "Please tell me about Krishna." And Sukhdev Goswami is also eager to glorify. Sutta Goswami is also eager to glorify. all this is evidence that krishna is the center of bhagavat like you know one of the most fascinating sections of the bhagavatam which i like very much is when parikshit maharaj is very tired in the sense he is not showing his tired this is the 10th canto going on already four days have passed 
he's very you know not eaten anything not drunk any water and he's asking so many questions about krishna's appearance in our bhagavatam classes i remember once it was a nirjal ekadashi everybody had done fasting and that time the bhagavatam that time breakfast used to be after bhagavatam so and that day the prabhu ji was giving class he did fast the previous day we were all fasting so 9 o'clock is supposed to end the class he went on till 9:30 and you are all like desperately and at 9:30 when he finished the class he said any questions and everybody was like and one person raised his hand and everybody looked at him with so much anger <laughs> hey come on be merciful <laughs> that is like violence so you can imagine somebody has not eaten anything drunk anything for four days four nights and shukde goswami is finished ninth canto and parishit maharaj starts asking so many questions about details about krishna and then after asking so many questions you know what the last verse he says which is very 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 interesting he says i asked so many questions but there are many questions i did not ask etad anyacha sarvam me mune krishna vicheshtitam abaktum arhasi sarvagya shuddha dhanaya vistritam he says etad anyacha sarvam me there are many other things which i did not ask you and mune o oh great muni krishna vicheshtitam about krishna's activities i did not ask you many questions but you please vaktum aharasi sarvagya but you please answer those questions which i have not asked <laughs> because why because of two reasons one is vaktum aharasi sarvagya you know everything so you can answer and that is your qualification and what is my qualification shraddha dana ya vistritam i have so much faith in krishna and i am so eager to hear about krishna so you are qualified to speak because you know everything and i am qualified to hear because i am desperate to hear so now shukdev goswami may say but parishit maharaj you have not eaten anything you have not drunk anything you are tired you must be hungry you must be thirsty shukdev goswami may say that so anticipating that response from shukdev goswami parishit maharaj tells him no 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 don't think i am fasting no i am not fasting i'm actually drinking meshati dussaha kshudma tektodam api badate pibantam tvam mukam boja chitam hari katam rutam he says dussaha you know extremely difficult to tolerate shutma hunger and thirst is extremely difficult to tolerate but i am not suffering from that meshati dussaha kshunma tektodam api badate i am not bound by hunger and thirst because i am not fasting pibantam i am drinking pibantam tvam mukham boja something that is coming from your mouth chutam hari katamrutam nectar of krishna which is coming from your mouth i am drinking it so i am not thirsty or hungry so you can go on now this conversation of sugdev and parishit maharaj is being narrated by there is you know parallelly many conversations going on in shrimad bhagavat so this conversation was being uh, narrated by suta goswami to shonaka rishi so shota uh, suta goswami tells shonaka you know when when parishit maharaj said this and suta goswami said this you know what happened so then suta goswami is now saying evam nishamya brugunandana sadu vadam vayasaki sa bhagavan ta vishnu ratam प्रत्यर्च कृष्ण चरित कलिकलमशर्तुमारभत भागवत प्रधान दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन यू शुड हियर वेरी केयरफुली शोनक ऋषि बिकॉज साधुवाद दिस इज द बेस्ट कॉन्वर्जेशन एवर वाय बिकॉज दिस इज स्पोकन बाय वैयासकी सुखदेव गोस्वामी अबाउट कृष्ण टू विष्णु रातम टू दैट पर्सन परीक्षित हु वॉज प्रोटेक्टेड बाय द लॉर्ड वेन वॉज इन द वूम ऑफ दिस मदर एंड these two people are coming together and discussing what shukdev goswami is specially chosen by krishna krishna was the one who told him to come out of his mother's womb he didn't want to come out of his mother's womb because he said maya is too strong so krishna and his father told him after told him i guarantee you that maya will not trouble you so shukdev goswami told his father who will listen to you i i want somebody who is a controller of maya to tell me then vasudev went to dwarka and called krishna and krishna told shukdev goswami i guarantee you that you will not be influenced by maya please come out so sukhde goswami is such a personality so sukhde goswami is saying who is discussing bhagavatam sukhde goswami and is discussing with parikshit maharaj who has seen krishna in the womb so when these two people will come together what they will talk what they will talk he is saying pratyarcha krishna charitam kalikalma shagnam 
see when two batsmen cricket match you see some in, intense matches going on tension and they in, they hit a boundary or some over is over you see those two batsmen come in the middle of the pitch and they're talking what are they talk are they discussing what is there for lunch or breakfast <laughs> <laughs> they are discussing abhi next over mein kaisa batting karne ka or you know two uh, underworld dons are calling each other on the phone a <laughs> babalu sheikh calling uh, some <laughs> munna bhai <laughs> they are calling what are what are they talking aaj bagota mein kaun sa verse chal raha hai mandir mein they will talk about their mafia business you know so two stock market two brokers will meet they will talk about stock market so when parikshit maharaj and shukdev goswami will come together what they will talk pratyarcha krishna charitam kalikalma shagnam they will discuss that by which the kali kalmasha will go away all the dirty things of kaliyuga will go away vyahar tumara bata bhagavat pradana so a very interesting last line so the goswami says if we hear carefully bhagavat pradana we will, we will be given krishna by shukdev goswami very important for us to hear this so not just the hearer huh? shukdev goswami when he heard this questions he got so ecstatic he said parikshit maharaj You are asking me these questions. I want to tell you something before I answer the questions. I want to tell something about you. Samya, Gavasita, Buddhi. Your intelligence is pure. Acha hai. You are a good boy. Samya, Gavasita, Buddhi. Tava, Rajar, Shri Sattama. You are the best king, saintly king. Vasudeva, Kataya, Amte, Yajjata, Nishtiti, Rati. I am convinced that you are completely attached to Krishna. And by asking me questions about Krishna, I am declaring for all time to come. that three kinds of people will always be benefited in a bhagavatam class vasudeva kata prashna purusham strin punatihi vaktaram prachakam shrotim tatpada salilam yata just like when ganga flows at tatpada salilam yata when ganga flows she cleans up the upper planet lower planet and the middle planets similarly when krishna kata flows three kinds of people are benefited वासुदेव कथा प्रश्न पुरुषाम स्त्रीन स्त्रीन संस्कृत मींस इंग्लिश थ्री पुनाति पुनाति मींस पुण्य होगा उनका भला होगा किसका भला होगा वक्तारम वन स्पीकिंग ही विल गेट बेनिफिट बिकॉज इज ग्लोरीफाइंग कृष्णा वक्तारम प्रचकम समबडी वाज आस्किंग क्वेश्चंस अबाउट कृष्णा एंड समबडी सेड आई डोंट हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस श्रोत्रिम वक्तारम प्रचकम श्रोत्रिम ऑल थ्री विल गेट बेनिफिट sometimes you know we give interactive classes i used to give in brahmachari class sometimes you know make group tasks interact you make mem two team like that two member team a b okay now like, so some brahmachari would get disturbed so someone brahmachari came and told me once bhuji aap class do na 2 ghanta do 3 ghanta do hum log sunenge aur beech mein thoda jhapki marenge thoda so jayenge but humko dimag lagane ko mat bolo thak jate hain hum log so but i was thinking yeah they are not bad because shubhe goswami has said they will also get benefit because they are wanting to hear so like that so this is uh, bhagavatam everywhere it is mentioned that bhagavatam has lot of benefits like in the sixth canto what a beautiful verse comes when yamaraj is telling is uh, <laughs> yamaraj tells is you know this uh, his associates are telling that whom should we get to you so yamaraj tells them who are the people who should get to me jeevana bhakti bhagavat ृष्णाय उसमें <laughs> bhagavatam everywhere krishna 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 you know once shila prabhupad was uh, giving a class he told devotees to arrange a program now this is very interesting past time uh, shila prabhupad was flying from london to new york 
So Bhagwan Prabhu came. Bhagwan Das was one of Prabhupada's disciples. He said, Prabhupada, we have arranged a program in France, in Paris, Olympia Theatre. So you come here. Papa said, no, but my program is already fixed. I have to go to America. It's very, really detailed plan is there. He said, no, Prabhupada, please, for two days, we have a big auditor, big stadium we have booked. Thousands and thousands of people are expected. Please come, please come. So Prabhupada said, you know, Bhagwan Prabhu was pushing a lot. So Srila Prabhupada said, okay, what to do? Uh, we can't say no to Bhagwan. <laughs> Bhagwan <laughs> is a supreme controller. So then Prabhupada laughed. Then he went for that program. But that program, what happened? They were expecting 40,000 people like that, big number. Only some 40, 50 people came. So they were very apologetic. But Srila Prabhupada gave the talk and Kirtan as if, not, as if there were thousands of people. He was not at all affected. So after that, so some devotees, they came and apologized to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, sorry, you know, we wanted to get so many people and we canceled all your programs and we brought you here. We are very sorry. Srila Prabhupada said, no, it's okay. See, I will shout to the stars that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. I will shout to the sky. I will shout to the wind. I will shout to the moon. I will shout to all directions. I will tell everywhere that Krishna is the Supreme Person of Godhead. Because I want a certificate from Krishna that here was a sincere person who tried to glorify me. I don't want a certificate from a pack of donkeys. Wow. <laughs> like that Srila Prabhupada said. So he was focused. He knew what he was doing. Like, you know, Satsurup Maharaj says that when he was a very new devotee, he had arranged Prabhupada's program in Boston University. And all young hippies had come to that class. It's all in a college campus. They had no idea of India, no idea of God, nothing, absolutely nothing. So, Srila Prabhupada, uh, they had arranged this program. And Srila Prabhupada is standing in front of the hippies. And the first sentence he says in that class is, so I want to thank all of you young boys and girls of America for giving me a chance today to glorify Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, Sasur Maharaj writes, <laughs> what, you know, when Prabhupada is thinking that these boys and girls are giving him a chance to glorify Krishna and, we, and these guys have no idea about what is God, what to speak of Krishna. So, Srila Prabhupada saw every opportunity as an opportunity to glorify Krishna. This is what Srimad Bhagavatam is doing. If you see Maitreya Rishi also in the Bhagavatam, he is so eager to glorify Krishna. And Vidura is very eager to hear. So if you see in the Bhagavatam, this is, I'm saying the common interest of the hearers and speakers of Bhagavatam is Krishna. Uddhava, same thing. You know? Like uh, uh, <clears throat> when Vidura first met Uddhava and he asked him questions on Krishna. So Uddhava is about to reply. So Shukde Goswami says Uddhava wanted to reply, but he could not reply. There's a very nice verse. Iti Bhagavata Prishtha Kshatra Vartam Priyashayam Uddhava heard questions from Vidura. He wanted to answer questions on Krishna, but he could not answer because he was so overwhelmed with emotion that he started crying. So this is the power of Krishna Kata. And then when he starts answering also, Uddhava says, I am most unfortunate that I took Krishna for granted. Durbhago bata lokoyam yadavo nitaramapi he says, Meena Ivodupam, the fish, sees the reflection of the moon in the water, and the fish thinks moon is one of our one of like one of us. So Krishna came here in our family. So we thought Krishna is like one of us. How unfortunate. Oh, Durbhaga Lokoyam. They are so unfortunate that you missed Krishna. We didn't understand his glories. So you'll see in Bhagavatam constantly devotees are either glorifying Krishna or lamenting that they misunderstood Krishna. Like that, you know, everywhere it is like that. And there are some conversations where they ask questions to the speaker and before the speaker could answer, they only answer. It is not out of arrogance. It is out of excitement. Like Vidura tells uh, Maitreya in one section, uh, he's asking questions about why people are suffering. And then he only gives the answer. Sukhaya karma ni karoti loko nate sukhambane ditaram amba Vindeta bhuya tataeva dukkham nayatra yuktam bhagavan vadena. Please tell me, my dear guru, my dear spiritual master, that people want happiness. They work hard to get happiness, but they don't get happiness. And then they feel, okay, I'm not getting happiness. At least let me remove my miseries. And miseries also don't go away. Then they get more miseries. So they work to get happiness, but instead of getting happiness and instead of getting relief from misery, they get more miseries. Why does this happen? He asks the question. 
And before Maitreya Rishi could answer, the next verse, he only says, Ah, it is because Janasya Krishna Dimukasya Deva. You have forgotten Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of God. So what I'm saying is the conversation is in, in normal conversations also Krishna comes. Janasya Krishna Dimukasya Deva. Oh, all the dukkha is because we have forgotten Krishna. But you are there, no? Anugrahaye hacharanti nunam bhutani bhavyani janardanasya. You are there, you are going around everywhere glorifying Krishna. So people will get benefit of Krishna kata. So like that, the Bhagavatam is constantly there, constantly glorifying. Ekanta labham vachaso nupumsam shushlo kamauler gunavada mahu. Shrutascha vidvad vibirupakritayam kata sudayam upasam prayogam. So there, are, there is another beautiful verse which explains that if we simply glorify Krishna and if we hear about Krishna, then uh, all the past sinful activities are all washed off. All the reactions are washed, washed off. And after all these questions, then Maitreya Rishi starts answering. He again glorifies Krishna kata. So I am not going into the details. There are so many verses. But like this, constantly, constantly, Krishna is glorified. So these are the eight of the twelve we have discussed. One last we will discuss now. Uh, Parivasha Sutra, because in this verse, emperor, this is called as emperor verse because this is glorifying Krishna and establishes that Srimad Bhagavatam is the form of Krishna. Just like Krishna, when he comes in the form of a fish, he's called Matsya. When he comes in the form of a Half man, half lion is called Narsimha. When it comes in the form of a boar, is called Vara. When it comes in the form of a dwarf, is called as Vamana. And when it comes in the form of a book, is called Shriman Bhagavad. Sukhdev Goswami says this very clearly. Krishna Svadamo Upagate. When Krishna went back to his spiritual world, Jnana Dharma Bihisaha. Jnana and Dharma also went away. Kalo Nashtha Drishamesha. In Kaliuga, everybody became blind. But Purana arko dhnodita. This Purana became arka. Arka means sun. It dispelled all the darkness. And Srimad Bhagavatam did the job what Krishna would have done personally if he was present here. So this is again, you know, the so Bhagavatam uh, is Krishna in book form or the sound form. So the first two cantos of Bhagavatam are compared to Krishna's lotus feet. Then, you know, it progressively goes up. The calves are compared, the third canto, fourth canto, like that, thighs, navel, the throat, the ninth canto, the face of Krishna is compared to the tenth canto, forehead is the eleventh canto, and the head is the twelfth canto. So like that, they are explained. Hmm. So <clears throat> these are the ten qualities. We will complete the discussions next time, and the chapter also will complete next time. And uh, the the twenty eighth verse will complete next time, and the other verses will just chant the translations. You can please read and come. I will stop here. If there are any questions or comments, we could take now. We'll take. We'll have time for one question. One. Just a point. This sound. Krishna is in the form of also in the sound only. It's also form of Krishna only. The sound form of Krishna. Right? Correct. Any comments? So thank you. Can you just repeat between the teachers and the verse? All that we discussed. You want to discuss? Want What's to? The point. Okay. What is the first one? Second is reconciliation. Third is distinction. Fourth is philosophical statement is more important than historical statement. And apparent contradictions have to be aligned and interpreted according to this verse. And sixth is complementing. Seventh is Krishna is the sub principal subject matter. Eighth is uh, Krishna is the common interest of all hearers and speakers of Srimad Bhagavatam. Within the Srimad Bhagavad. And uh, then, ninth is Srimad Bhagavatam is the form of Krishna. So we'll discuss the 10th, 11th, and 12th next time. Hare Krishna. Krantra Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.